the former president, um, you know, he's missing in action tonight. While facing federal felony charges, former President Donald Trump continues to hold a commanding lead in polling among Republican White House hopefuls. After skipping the first debate last month, he saw no need to take part in the second GOP presidential debate this week. Some fellow Republicans have accused Trump of ducking his responsibilities to voters. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has been a consistent critic of the Republican frontrunner, but now Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is calling him out as well. In a recent NBC interview, Trump said Florida's six-week ban on abortion signed by Governor DeSantis was a terrible mistake. And he's had a lot to say about that. He should be here explaining his comments to try to say that pro-life protections are somehow a terrible thing. Some have found it more effective to pull their punches when speaking about the former president. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy may hope to draw Trump supporters to his campaign. I think Trump was an excellent president. But the America First agenda does not belong to one man. It does not belong to Donald Trump. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to you. But there's one Republican Ramaswamy isn't impressing. Honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley critical as the political newcomer has tried to capture the attention of young voters. Ramaswamy recently appeared in a TikTok video with a social media influencer. But Haley says it's China that has too much influence over TikTok and user data, which poses a security risk. Excuse you are me. now wanting kids to go and get on the social media that's dangerous for all of us. You went and you were in business with the Chinese that gave Hunter Biden $5 million. We can't trust you. All Republican candidates are trying to win the trust of voters. U.S. Senator Tim Scott said building up the country starts with families. If you want to restore hope, you've got to restore the family, restore capitalism, and put Americans back at work together as one American family. Among the debate topics, education, health care, and crime. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum touting his record in his state. But the reason why we're not talking about education or health care or safety being a problem in North Dakota is because we have a business leader. I've got more experience as a business leader than I think this whole group combined. I know I've created more jobs than everybody else on stage. Former Vice President Mike Pence said he has the needed political experience to become the next commander in chief and the plans to fight major problems like gun violence. I am sick and tired of these mass shootings happening in the United States of America. And if I'm president of the United States, I'm going to go to the Congress of the United States and we're going to pass a federal expedited death penalty for anyone involved in a mass shooting. Pence, a vocal Christian, may support the death penalty, but it is opposed by Catholic teaching. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states... The death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person. Catholic Governor Ron DeSantis supports the death penalty in Florida. He's also an advocate for unborn babies. DeSantis says he'd support a national 15-week abortion ban if he became president. In years past, Catholic Chris Christie has also shared his support of the death penalty. On the debate stage, he provided this perspective on his pro-life views. That if you're pro-life, you have to be pro-life for the entire life not just the nine months in the womb. We need to make sure that for the drug addicted 16 year old on the floor of the county lockup, her life is precious too. School choice and parental involvement in education was also discussed at this week's debate. And really bring in that parental involvement, that's when we'll start to see a difference, but we've got to get parents back included. And parental rights to know how children choose to identify in schools also came up. A broader conversation about gender continues across America. I have to be very clear about this. Transgenderism, especially in kids, is a mental health disorder. We have to acknowledge the truth of that for what it is. The next Republican debate will take place in November. Mark Irons, EWTN News In-Depth.